Sitting on a, a log, surrounded by these uh, by these logs, whatever they are, large, and it's the smell of it, isn't it? Yeah, I and mean, you can see the fresh shoots of it as well. Look, um, you can see the little green coming yeah. through. Yeah, and it's so soft. It's like it's the most, it's the softest, most kind of friendly pine you yeah. come across, isn't it? Oh yeah, I see that little. They, and they're really gentle, like little mm. kind of fresh shoots. Mm. So we're very lucky really that we've got this fantastic material that's been here since the beginning of time. Everyone loves it, you can't you wanna to touch it, you want to stroke it, that's you right. feel it's very therapeutic for want of a better word. There's something very healing about weird. Somebody a few years ago wrote a book called um, Creative Malady, I mm. think. And it argued the case that highly creative people often are, are Okay, they, they've got a screw loose or whatever, whatever label you like to put on it, but they, they, they operate in a completely different way. And, um, and with their highs can come terrible downs. And we know this with people like um, Stephen Fry and oh, Paul, yeah. Paul Merton. Mm. And it's only very, very recently that people are coming out and saying, look, you know, like a guy like Paul Merton, very, very clever guy, makes people laugh, but there's that other side to him. Do you feel worse for knowing that? I, I think it enriches our lives to know that without having it kind of pushed down your throat. So what I can really say Why is... Why do you think mental illness is such a taboo? Because, partly because it's a mirror of fear uh, of every individual that they might have it in them. Mm -hmm. I think it's very complex. Nobody wants to be around a negative person, but I think this is part of the creative malady thing, that when you're really firing on six cylinders creatively, you are generating energy. So although you may be suffering yourself with the lows, um, what you're producing through your work, whether it's um, you know furniture making or art or whatever, has got fantastic positive mm. energy for the world out there. Yeah. So really all I'm saying is this is often the story behind it's not always but occasionally there is a correlation between creativity and um, if you like mental anguish for better uh, for want of a better word and to pick up on the TV thing a bit more do you think that the reason people are scared is because they don't understand and that the medical profession actually doesn't have an adequate understanding of the way that the mind works and they therefore all they can do is medicate in a very pharmaceutically yeah. um, oriented it's, profession it's a tragedy and it doesn't actually heal the individual do you think it's something to it, do with that it takes time but i heard somebody use the analogy of a jet engine in how it works and it's got tubes and wires etc etc its function is very simple but the human brain is also has got lots of tubes and wires and synapses and blah 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 but also, the main point is its function, the human brain, is very, very complex, unlike the jet engine. So I think to answer your question, it is a can of worms, and that to drug people, and I had a sister 
who was sadly addicted to um, a prescription drug called Ativan, mm. which was a benzodiazepam that still churned out to old people. It totally, um, well, let's not go there other than to say that there are other ways of therapy. And the fantastic thing about wood is that you've just got to touch it, you've just got to smell it, and you are immediately engaging with something that's been here longer certainly than I have and and will be around longer than I will mm -hmm.